I'm Dr. Marshall Shepard and I'm the Director of the Atmospheric Sciences Program at the University of Georgia and the Georgia Athletic Association Distinguished Professor of Atmospheric Sciences and Geography. My name is John Trostel. I'm the Director of the Severe Storms Research Center here at GTRI. We're rivals on the football field in sports, but we are locked at the hip when it comes to studying weather and improving uh, access to information, data, and understanding for our state. And so I was ecstatic when my colleague John Trostel reached out to me with this opportunity because it represented another way that the University of Georgia and Georgia Tech could collaborate. I've been involved in recent collaborations on things like Drawdown Georgia or the Georgia Climate Project, which focus more in the climate space. This is a real opportunity for us to collaborate to understand better weather in this state teach our students, and perhaps even provide a service for citizens and those living in the state of Georgia. I actually was online one night and saw a, uh, a used weather radar going up for sale um, from a company that's very well known in the uh, weather radar uh, community. Uh, they were going to put up their latest radar and so their research radar was uh, being offered. I got in touch with a collaborator at, at UGA and we put together a consortium of folks from UGA and Georgia Tech and GTRI to put up the funds for this computer. So UGA has put in half the funds, uh, Georgia Tech has put in the half the funds. It's been quite an interesting collaboration. It's a game changer from several perspectives. One, we know that there are gaps in parts of Northeast Georgia or the places where the radar from the National Weather Service is too high. Uh, even the terminal Doppler radar at the Atlanta airport, there's a large landfill that blocks some of the radar beam. And that radar is designed specifically to aid flights coming in and out of Hartsfield Airport to look for signs of wind shear and severe storms in the area of, of the airport. And the problem with the TDWR, as it's called, is there is a landfill that's situated just to its northeast. So there's a big pie-shaped area in the uh, reflections coming back from the TDWR that are blanked out. Um, our radar will actually be sitting in that area when we have it in its final spot, so it'll fill in that whole gap. And so the National uh, Weather Service and the, the folks at uh, Hartsfield Airport will, will be able to look at the, re the returns from our radar to see if there's anything of concern in that area. Well, we can never have enough weather radar coverage, particularly with the storms and rainfall that we experience in Georgia. Now, the National Weather Service and even some television stations have longer wavelength radars and they can give you extended range coverage, which we need. This radar is unique because it's an X-band system, uh, has a shorter wavelength, which means it has less range, but the importance of that is that it can fill gaps. We can get detailed looks at places perhaps that we're missing with some of those radars or that we want more detailed information about for our research or teaching at Georgia Tech or the University of Georgia. It's gonna be in a very interesting area because it transitions from very urban to suburban to rural. Um, as we go across the state in between uh, Atlanta and Athens. And so be, by placing the radar right in the middle there, we can sample all of those different regimes and see how that affects uh, the weather that we see with radar. Uh, this enables real-time instruction of Georgia Tech and University of Georgia students. We have an actual radar system that these students can learn from a, an engineering perspective at Georgia Tech, an atmospheric sciences perspective at both institutions. And then thirdly, it positions both universities to go after research funding. Uh, there are often research experiments that involve real-time observations and uh, this capability with the mobility of it might allow us to participate in future field campaigns studying anything from severe weather to urban flooding to even insect and bird migration.